Hello, now to cover a very small and often forgotten about part of the computer science course, talking about embedded systems. So, an embedded system is a special purpose computer which is encapsulated by a larger system. Let's start with the encapsulated by a larger system part of our definition because the word embedded really means it's inside something else, of course. So that is really the essence of this definition. By a larger system, this can mean anything really. It doesn't have to be a computer. In fact, it's not in most cases. So for instance, a hot tub is not a computer, but it has got some embedded systems inside it, which are computers. These computers might control the jets, it might control the heating, it might control the lights if it's a fancy hot tub. Those sort of things would be embedded systems. And that links to the first part of this definition, the idea that embedded systems are special purpose. They do one job, pretty much, and nothing else really. So the jets in a hot tub are not controlled by a very powerful gaming computer. They're controlled by a very, very simple embedded system, which does one job. Therefore, something like a laptop or a desktop computer or your smartphone is a non-embedded system. It doesn't do one job only, and it's not inside a wider system. It's on its own and can do a few jobs at once. Now, definitions for an embedded system can vary a little bit, but traditionally, like I've said so far, really they only perform very specific tasks, maybe only one task, maybe a couple of very similar tasks, and crucially, you can't easily reprogram these systems. Right, if you smashed up a hot tub and got out the few embedded systems inside it, you couldn't then adapt them to do some other job. They're really only good at one thing, and they're not designed to be changed. A very common exam question is to ask you to give some examples of embedded systems. So go into an exam with some in your head just to save you having to think of them on the fly. Let me give you a few now then. So a common example is a toaster or a microwave. I think microwave is a better example because even the cheapest microwave probably is a computer, or you could argue it is. The cheapest toaster hasn't really got a need to do much processing. Remember, we are talking about computers here. A computer takes some input, does some processing, and gives some output. A very, very cheap toaster is just a heating element and some plastic. It's not really a computer. But a toaster which has a screen and can take more controls and can do things automatically could be considered a embedded system. Another really good set of examples are the embedded systems within modern cars. So modern cars have got loads of very basic computers dotted about. If you just wrote down car as an answer, that wouldn't really be sufficient because a car is not a computer, but inside it you've got computers which control things like windscreen wipers, the security, anti-lock braking, active suspension, the sat nav itself is a embedded system. All those sorts of examples are embedded systems. There are also loads in medicine. So for example, the computers used in intensive care could be argued to be embedded systems. They do one job, very, very specific, and they work within a wider medical apparatus. And another very common set of examples are the computers used in planes. So for example, the autopilot is an embedded system. The wider system is the plane itself. Now, another common question is about what are some characteristics of embedded systems? Well, because it's not, the definition is not perfect, it's quite a wide definition, as I've said a couple of times now, we can say they tend to have certain characteristics. It's not definite, but they tend to have similar characteristics. So very, very often, both the memory and the CPU will be on the same chip. Now, by chip, we mean the integrated circuit. So in a desktop computer, there'll be on the motherboard together, but they're not part of the same physical circuit board. Whereas for an embedded system, they would generally be on the same circuit board. This is done because it's easy to manufacture and you've got no need to switch out your memory or switch out your CPU like you might do in a standard desktop computer, say. Another common characteristic is to have more ROM than RAM. ROM stands for read-only memory and can't be changed. So once you write data in it, you can't easily change it which is fine for an embedded system because why would you change its very basic function? You wouldn't in most cases. RAM, you can change the data inside it, but you may not even need RAM actually in some very simple cases. So you might just have ROM instead of RAM. Therefore, ROM is effectively used as secondary storage in some embedded systems. ROM is cheap. That's why it would be used over RAM or over some secondary storage device 
which also are generally bigger and take up more space. A final characteristic is that embedded systems are usually real-time devices. What this means is, if you give it an input, it will deal with it straight away without any delays, which is not the case in many computers. So for example, your laptop might take a long time to load a certain program if it's doing lots of other stuff in the background. It might be downloading a YouTube video, it might be, you might be listening to music, it might be installing an update, it might be doing lots of tasks at once and so can't always respond straight away when you give it some input. That's not the case in most embedded systems and that's quite important in most cases because often they're doing very critical jobs and if it can't do its one job properly then it's not much use. So to give you another example to use in an exam maybe, a pacemaker is a medical device which goes inside the body and will try and detect a slow heart rate. If it detects it, it will send a shock to try and stimulate the heart more. In that case, it's clearly crucial that it's in real time, otherwise it's one job it wouldn't be able to do very effectively.